Hey guys, Gwinnett here. I'm bringing you one of my matches from MPDC 2305. I am playing against Mace Windu, and he um, is playing the Demir Mill deck, so I thought I would take this particular game and just show you some of the principles that I was talking about in my article. Um, I didn't end up winning uh, this particular match, um, but for the sake of time, I just want to show you this first game. Um, so you'll notice right away, before anything else, um, I did win the... I, because I lost game one, I do get the choice to play first. And I have 75 cards in my library, my opponent has 62. Take a look at my opener here. Um, sorry, I pushed past that pretty fast, but no matter what it was, I was pretty much just going to mulligan. And here, no lands, mulligan, again, no lands, mulligan. So again, mull, you end up having to mull all the way down to 5, um, my, or I'm sorry, down to 4, my opponent keeps to 7. But again, that gives me a nice, you know, an additional cushion there of, you know, 16 cards, which is, you know, not, not you know, no small thing. And plus I have, you know, I definitely can do some things here. A Voyage's End isn't a bad draw. It's not particularly helpful, but can help dodge a Grizzly Spectacle at some point. And just continue to do draw go here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and play out those Basilica guards here. He could have Essence Scatter, but if so, I'm happy to actually get that out of his hand. Um, this is not a card that I'm going to do anything with this particular match. So I was kind of hoping I would just meet a counter there. But he doesn't have a counter for it yet. Um, I don't really draw anything, so I just got to discard again. I'm sorry, not discard, but just pass the turn back. And here he does go ahead and play Grizzly Spectacle. Um, I am going to go ahead and here and just uh, Voyage in, mostly just because it, it, it keeps, it cancels this card out and gives me something to play next turn. And, you know, plus I'm able to, to get an extra point of life here, which if he's going to, you know, since he's going to have a hard time milling me out, the life is certainly going to matter. So I'll return this to my hand. I've got an Essence Scatter coming, which is going to be pretty good for me. And my opponent just plays a landing and says go. Um, if he's got an Arcam answer here, I'm going to be able to Essence Scatter. It's got to read the bones. And see, this is one of the things that's interesting. Um, early on in these builds, they were playing read the bones, but against an opponent like I am, who's trying to mill my opponent out, this is really great for me. He loses two life, which probably isn't relevant, um, but he potentially draws through four of his cards, which is you know really just playing into in, into exactly what I wanted him to do. Now, in this case, he kept both of them on top, so he only, only milled him two, but that just increased. You know, Now it's a... Um, what an 18 card difference between our two libraries, which is just great for me. So here I play out the Basilica Guard. If he has the counter here, I can go ahead and play the Dispel and get it on the on the field, which again, I'm just trying to force him to play counters and get around him and force him to spend more cards so that when I draw the cards that really matter, I'm really going to be able to, to force the issue. So here he went ahead and did bottom top, so I gained three more cards in our respective library advantage here. Uh, the Basilica Guards is also nice. And one thing it does do is it blocks our Cam Mancers. It makes it really hard for him to um, win with our Cam Mancers. And into turn, he's going to go ahead and is this Thassa's bounty? Okay, this is a Grizzly Spectacle. I'm going to go ahead and Voyage End again here. Again, just negating any advantage he'd get off a of Grizzly Spectacle and saving me, you know, three, you know, one for this power plus the, oh, I guess it is just the one. So in this case, it's just, you know, it's just milling for one, but it's still, hey, it saves me the, saves me the thing. And obviously, I'm kind of um, telegraphing there that I had Essence Scatter since I didn't pay for the Basilica card, but that's not a big deal. I'm kind of surprised. Oh, he's playing Doss's Bounty here. He's playing nothing here. Okay, he just goes ahead and plays Read the Bones again, realizes I must have Essence Scatter in hand. But again, now I've got a 23 card advantage, and just, you know, just happy to pass the turn back at this point. And he, he's going to need a threat in order to do anything. Now, he did bring in Duresses against me, which is pretty good. He gets to take the Essence Scatter out of my hand. Oh, I'm sorry, he takes the Cancel out of my hand, which is good for him. Draw Pacifism, which, if he ever gets his Archaeum Answers going, will be good for me. Does find an Archaeum Answer here. Obviously, I'm going to try to Essence Scatter it. And he has a cancel to counteract that. Um, but it basically runs him out of cards, which is good. Let's see, he, he goes ahead and returns to Psychic Strike. So if he doesn't have a land here, I should be able to pacify, which is what I'm going to do here, and negate him from being able to attack. Here he's got a Thassa's Bounty, which, again, just accelerates him down. That draws draw, draw him some cards as well. But... Um, again, I'm at this point, I'm happy with that. He does find another duress to get rid of my Celestial Flare, which hurts a little bit. I'm definitely going to be in a glut of land here pretty soon, but that's all right. Let's see, my opponent here is gonna, it's just going to go ahead and play the Thassa's Bounty. Um, but again, that doesn't actually, you know, again, this card doesn't actually change the library race because he draws three and I lose three. Now, he obviously gets three cards up. 
but really cards are not, you know, the fact that he has access to more cards than me ultimately doesn't really matter. It's all about when when do you pick to, you know, when do you choose to play those cards. Now, too, he's having to start discarding, and I'm not, so he, he's, you know, basically losing card, losing a lot of that initial card value, card advantage that he had because he has to keep discarding because he doesn't have anything to do since I'm not casting spells. And this is another thing that you can often pull off against this Demir Mill deck is once, if they start pl playing a bunch of their draw spells and they just have a bunch of cards in hand, Basically, they can't play those cards unless you do something. And so as long as I'm not having to discard, I am perfectly happy to force him to discard because it negates a lot of the card advantage that he got off of the spells. Um, so here, rather than discarding, I do go ahead and play the Owen Speaker. Even though I know I'm playing into one of his cards, I'd rather do that than have to discard. Better If I'm going to lose a card anyway, better to get a card out of his hand than just out of mine. A little bit here we go. So I draw another land and just pass the turn back. Having some trouble getting a little bit of lag here. See if I can keep this going. Not sure what's going on here. There we go, we're moving. My opponent just draws. Yeah, we really are having some trouble here. Let's see if hitting play helps at all. There we go, so we're moving again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cast the Basilica Guards. Again, I'm happy to get this countered because it's not really vital to my plan. And he seems to realize that, and is just going to let it go. Which is fine. In the turn, he's going to Grizzly Spectacle it. Um, I go ahead and Voyages in here. I think in retrospect, that might not have been... Okay, so I am. I actually don't Voyage in. And the reason for that is, you know, it's going to mill... It only is milling um, one, which, you know, I really just don't care that much about. So I'm happy to, you know, happy for that to go ahead and happen. That's not what I want to fight about. Um, does find his third duress, you know, and they're going to find all their cards. I mean, that's because you're trying to run them out of cards, so that's just how it's going to happen. Um, so that's fine, you know, continue to lose those to duress. Um, he draws some more cards, but again, that's, you know, I now have a 22 card library advantage, so unless he's able to really get a whole bunch of Archaeomancers going here, I'm in pretty great shape. I do a, go ahead and run out the Seek out here, a little premature, because um, it just allows him to Psychic Strike. Um, might not have been the best use of my cards there, might have been better to hold off. I do go ahead and cast the Nimbus Nyad here. Um, see if he's, he's going to use another Grizzly Spectacle here. So now I will go ahead and Voyage's End and forces him to use another Psychic Strike, which, you know, is fine. Again, that's a... it cost him two. I guess it technically cost me two as well, but it's really not that big a deal for me. I do lose both a Pacifism and a Last Breath there, which is unfortunate. Those are going to be cards I'm going to want access to. We're now at the Nimbus Nyad again. Um, plays a Cancel here. That's fine. I just let it go to the go to the graveyard, much rather fight about other things. Um, here I do kind of get into a bind in that um, I don't have enough mana to do two counters here, um, so he's able to counter my counter, which is good for him. Um, does get his Archaeum answer, which allows him to draw into another uh, cancel spell, so that's going to make it a little harder, but he's down to two cards in hand, which is just great for me. I'll play the Basilica Guards here, so there's one of them down. And so now I'm able to play this Nefalia Seakite and uh, pretty much keep him from being able to attack, which, you know, is really important here. Um, see what he draws into here. Thought it was a Thassa's Bounty. Yeah, it is a Thassa's Bounty, dropping him to 16 cards. So he mills some of mine. Has a Devour Flesh, which is good for him. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm in pretty good shape. I've got 23, 23 life. He's only got 16 cards. So that gives him 16 rounds, essentially 17 rounds. And so I'm in pretty good shape here. As long as he doesn't draw another one that I can't deal with. But with Essence Scatter in hand, I should be in pretty good shape. Go ahead and play the Archaeum answer here. I probably should have, definitely should have tapped my mana differently. Um, if I'd had this plus two, I would have been able to Essence Scatter. So that was a mistake. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. Let's see what happens. No, it doesn't come back to bite me. I have a Keating Apparition again, which I'm just happy to play out and force him to, you know, force him to do something. Um, he is able to Devour Flesh, but, and ultimately, that Devour Flesh is also helping me, though, because, it, you know, it, it just increases the amount of life he has to take away for me to win. So, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, draw into a land here, which isn't great. I just hold on to it. I'm going to hold this Essence Scatter back. I'm due drawn to this deputy now so that when he attacks, I'm able to spring this out. Unfortunately, he has another Devour Flesh, but it negates his attack that turn, which isn't all bad. does have another Archaeomancer here, which I attempt to counter and do. 
um, drawn to another land, which isn't great, but as long as he doesn't have it, unfortunately he does have the Archaeomancer here, so draws the Psychic Strike. Um, so now he's able to do two a turn, which means he's got 12, which means he's actually winning this race. So I'm going to need to draw into something here in order to win. But I only need to delay him by a turn, basically. So any anything I can do now to disrupt one of his attacks, one of these rounds, is all I need to win. And of course this will probably be when I'll draw lands and fortifies and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, speaking of fortify, a great card uh, for this deck, but doesn't do anything here, obviously. Just a dead card. Which is unfortunate, but you know, when you bring your whole sideboard in, you're going to have some dead cards. If this deck continues to increase in popularity, I'll probably side these out, just because there's no sense having them. They do absolutely nothing in this matchup. And if I'm going to play this deck a lot, I mean, I faced Demir Control twice in this in this tournament, so... I'm definitely considering taking the fortifies out. And, you know, here just not drawing anything that's relevant. And um, I'm off by one turn here, so let's see, I might be able to put this deputy right here, maybe enough. He's got an essence scatter, which I just let go. I'm not really sure why I didn't play this spell there. It must have been a misclick on my part. So draw into an unknown shores, and he's continuing to whittle away at me. But again, all i got to do is disrupt him once. So play the deputy here. He's got a Psychic Strike. I'll attempt to dispel it. He unfortunately has a Cancel. And so it's looking pretty good for him. I've only got three turns now. Draw into another Fortify, which is not great. Drops me to four. So I've got this turn and next to draw a card. I do find a Last Breath. Which is definitely good for me. Go ahead and attempt to Last Breath. And his one card in hand is his last Psychic Strike. So, um, yeah, I have to draw something here and him not have a counter. Um, but in this case, I do draw my final Basilica Guards, and he's able to attack, but then he can't win. So I just, you know, barely squeak it out, but I am able to mill out the mill opponent. So that was a great illustration of kind of what I'm talking in the article. Um, hope you enjoyed watching. In closing, let me remind you, you can keep up with all my writings and articles by following me on Twitter at the username Gwened42. That's G-W-Y-N-E-D and the number 42. I also regularly publish articles over at puremtgo.com. Search for me by the username Gwened on that site or find the link in the description of this video. I also maintain a blog now at writeradept.blogspot.com and you can also find that in the description. Finally, if you enjoyed these videos, please remember to subscribe to my channel and post any feedback or comments. Thanks for watching.